Widener James Zhao. I write the blog New World Notes, which covers kind of the emergence of the metaverse, virtual worlds, virtual goods, and in that uh, space definitely fits Philip Rosedale. And I met Philip uh, when I was working at Linden Lab and wrote a book called The Making of Second Life, which was about uh, Philip's kind of first big groundbreaking startup, which was the Linden Lab's uh, Second Life. And that kind of dovetailed, it seems like, to what we have now and where we are now, which is on uh, Market Street, which is uh, Coffee and Power. That's right. And so, yeah, maybe you could tell me how Coffee and Power sort of dovetailed from uh, Second Life. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I mean, you were there at the beginning of Second Life, and so you remember what it was like. Um, I know that when I started Second Life, obviously, I was dreaming about the sort of physical structure of a digital world where you could build things with little pieces and put them together but I always also had the feeling that um, there needed to be a sort of an open-ended economy and ability for people to build stuff and sell that stuff to each other and, and that that would be integral you know that this sort of marketplace of people doing things inside Second Life would be mm -hmm. I don't know you know a big part of why people would come there you know beyond just having this amazing 3D experience so it's interesting because as I as you know, you know, when Second Life started to take off, it went from being this kind of big building set to this big place full of people that were having all these interesting interactions and in many cases were being um, changed by and empowered by and, and you know altered by the experience in ways that at least for me I didn't really think about when we started and I got really interested in all that you know the more people got we started to see stories in Second Life like you know people creating new jobs for themselves or finding new careers right like I remember the woman who was became an architect right because she went back to I, I think started doing architecture in Second Life and then started taking classes in the real world to be an architect because she discovered that she had this interest so I always felt like um, Hey, there's, there's kind of a general theme around how creative environments empower people, mm -hmm. and uh, both economically and you know just I guess creatively, you know, change their lives. And so when uh, I know that when Ryan and I, who uh, originally started uh, Love Machine, which was the company that was after Linden Lab and, and has become uh, now Coffee and Power, we were really interested in the more general question of kind of how people work together and how you enable them to work together in better ways because Second Life was one way of doing that and so Coffee and Power is like our take on um, another way of doing that right which is that what if you just almost took the pieces of electronic technology that connect people in Second Life and you said well could you use the same sort of strategy to get people to just do little things for each other or do creative things for each other, but in the real world or or maybe in the online world, but not necessarily the 3D world. Mm -hmm. And Coffee and Power is basically that. It's this idea of how do you enable people to work for each other, to like do small jobs, uh, probably smaller jobs than what we think of as like salary jobs in the real world, and do those things super, super fast mm -hmm. um, in an online environment. Give them a way to pay each other, a way to see what's going on, a way to talk and ask questions, a way to establish trust, which is probably like the most important part of the problem when you're doing something right. small with some four or with somebody you don't know very well. How do you get how do you get these two people to trust each other? Mm -hmm. So that general idea of like kind of uh, creating this futuristic sort of a workplace where people can do little jobs for each other. That's what Coffin Fire is all about. Okay, well let's uh, go back a little bit and just start from the beginning of what actually is Coffee and Power in the sense of how it works and how right. a project gets assigned and yeah. what you see when you, you hit the site. So when you when you go to Coffee and Power, what you see is a big list of what are called missions, which are like jobs. And the, one of the neat things about Coffee and Power is that you can either say what you what you will do for somebody else and how much money you want to be paid for that or when you're available. And you can also say what you want done. Mm -hmm. So it's like a big two-way marketplace where, where people meet. So when you look at the site, what you see is this listing of things that people either will, will do for you or want done for themselves. And then you're able to add to that listing or jump on jump on a piece of work and, and say, I'll make an offer, I'll, I'll do that for you um, and get it done. Um, the system also has a way of chatting with everybody else. So if you just want to ask a question like, hey, what's the site for? Or is anybody running 
errands in San Francisco right now. You can just do that because there's basically just a public chat. There's a dynamic chat on here that's okay. built in. Yeah, so I can just I can just say hi everyone. Uh, and then that again is you know a lot like Second Life that in the, the, this idea of just being able to chat you know to oh and it sort else. of pops up dynamically and yeah shows it pops exactly. up on the map so if people are sitting in Coffee and Power right now uh, and and you actually see little people little avatars we call them little icons oh, very much like a dynamic yeah. SL map yeah so like if we look exactly I'm like dragging around in this map now and you know if we look at San Francisco I can see all the people who are actually logged into Coffee and Power right now a lot of those people are. Uh, waiting to do work for other people and so they've got these little job listings I will is red and I want is blue uh, and so yeah so you can communicate with people you can make an offer on stuff you can write down something you're you need done and how much you're willing to pay for it or something you will do um, and how much you want to be paid and then when somebody accepts that offer you know you get an indication you get an email you can get text messaging so everything's all SMS enabled that's kind of a new world that I didn't remember, so it didn't, didn't matter so much when second right. started um, so it, you know we, we've used every piece of communication technology we can there's a mobile web version of this there's soon to be iPhone and Android apps for this as well um, and as as you go through when you do work for somebody you get these messages and then you're able to immediately click you know okay the work's done I'm happy and pay the person so we also built a payment system into this as well again a lot like Second Life where we thought it was very important for there to be a currency built in that people could immediately use to pay each other so the same thing exists in Coffee and Power. Okay I just saw one of the tasks or one of the offers where it was I will teach you how to pronounce Sanskrit. Right. Which is pretty epic. Well and you know what's funny about that Let, let's take a look at that right if I blow this one up we've, 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 we've got somebody here Shivani who uh, is a is, is uh, oh, favorite is um, uh, trusted by one other person so far in the system uh, she's put the mission up here saying for $25 I will teach you how to pronounce Sanskrit properly um, one person has made her an offer on that meaning I'd like to do that <laughs> so learning how to pronounce Sanskrit that's an example of what I think is magical about coffee and power that's like Second Life right nobody would Total left field. Yeah, this is not in the yellow pages, right? Yeah. I mean, nobody would. You wouldn't take a class to learn how to pronounce Sanskrit, but yeah. you might meet somebody at our cafe here. We're in the Coffee and Power Cafe, uh, the work club we call it. To, to, to have them teach you that, you know, for 25 bucks, it might actually be a blast. It might be a good way to spend $25. And what if you had just made $25 in Coffee and Power doing Coffee something Coffee. equally interesting? Uh, so how does it work on a very practical basis? Say I want my dry cleaning done in an hour or someone to pick up my dry cleaning. How reliable is the system going to be that I can put that in and, and be pretty sure that someone is going to pick it up yeah. within that time and get it there and it's not a flake and it's going to end up wearing my clothes. Right. Stupid. So let's talk about that. So so I just switched to the category. There's also categories um, and we're continuously revising this page design to figure out the right way to present all this stuff to everybody. But you've got a bunch of different categories. One of our categories is errands and deliveries, which is speaking to what you just said. So can somebody do my dry cleaning? So, so first of all, I can just shift down to just that category so I'm not gonna see I'm gonna you know make you earrings or something like that there's all these different categories then I can look for like uh, if there's somebody to run an errand so I'll run an errand for you anywhere south of the market um, there's another one here and I'm gonna bring this one up as an example um, this person says I'll be your agent on Craigslist so this this is a person who's been very successful in coffee and power and he's basically saying I will um, uh, uh, Takes take old stuff for you and sell it on uh, oh, sell it on a Craigslist okay. and then take a commission on that. But but you asked this question about trust, which is I think the key thing. Yeah. So let's let's actually take a look at this mission. Now, what we can immediately see, um, actually, let me just hover over here. The first thing you'll see is that we collect this piece of information. Anonymously, you can say whether you trust somebody that you've worked with. It's not like Facebook likes because they don't know whether you said it about them or not. Right. So it's, it's this really fascinating piece of information. So you as an end user are saying, I trust this guy. So this, this user, S. Vizio, who, who is one of our most prolific, successful people thus far and does a lot of errands, 
Amazon's deliveries, is trusted by seven people. Now let's say that we're not totally sure, right? Still, that's not necessarily enough, right? So what else do I want to know? So now I'm going to bring, bring this thing up. Well, he's offline, so I think the most successful people in here are going to be online ready to chat with you. So one thing is, and obviously we're right at the beginning, there, there's literally you know 20 people online right now, so this is just coming online, but you're going to want to find somebody that you can chat with right then. But the other fascinating thing here is that we've taken this idea that transparency creates trust, and, and this is you know something we saw in Second Life as well. So we take everything that S Visio has really done in the system, and we put it all up here for you to see, mm -hmm. even as someone who's never worked with them before. So this concept of level, this is actually kind of like game design, yeah. is sort of a aggregation of all the data I'm about to tell you about him into a level. So he is level seven. So that should mean something to you. Like I can probably trust this guy. Another thing is he's trusted by seven people and tells you a little bit about him. Here are his completed missions. So you can actually see that in errands and deliveries, he's done two missions with a total value of $150. You can also see how much money he's earned, $426 overall working in coffee. That's in power. coffee dollars. Yeah, that's in coffee dollars. dollars. Yep. Which are pretty much dollars though. Unlike so about one dollars, it's one to one. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can see how many tips he's earned from people, $45. Okay. So that's pretty interesting. People have tipped him. Yep. You can see reviews people have written about him and how many, so that would be like Yelp or something or eBay. Right, right. And then if you want to, you can just click here and look at every single job that he's done in Coffee and Power. And here they, here they, here they all are. So, clean the windows at the work club. Um, so that's going to pretty well establish a reliable person and someone that I can trust with my, my dry cleaning. Well, we think this whole idea of how you super efficiently, uh, rapidly establish trust, that's the key. And, and whoever figures it out in this kind of segment and, yeah. and does that plus communication makes it fun, you know, uh, makes it easy for people to do things for each other. It, we, we think it's going to be quite a... Yeah. Quite a quite well, related to that, I've seen a lot of these uh, karmic systems can get gained because people will just kind of give each other high ratings. Uh, even though it's anonymous, could this yeah. be gained? Could I well, uh, all the friends or is it there's a, a time delay or is there a way of... Uh, well, one thing is that uh, if you are paying money to people, the system's a lot harder to gain. And that's part of what's interesting here. You can only review somebody if you've actually paid them money. Oh, okay. So, our system. so yes, we're thinking about those types of issues, and that question is exactly a great one. Um, we want to make it very difficult uh, to game the system, and the fact that it has an economy tied to it makes that easier because you can see that happening. Um, but, you know, it's, it, it, this is going to be an ongoing sort of a design challenge to mm -hmm. do that well. And we think that, you know, part, partly partly through the second life experience and just through our own interest and focus on this, that we, we think we can do it. You know, that, that's one of the things we want to, you know, make magical about this. So let's talk about coffee dollars. How do they work? And is it like linen dollars in the sense that you can cash out? Uh, yeah, coffee dollars are more like real dollars than Linden dollars in the sense that when you need more, you can just buy extra ones into your account and when you want to cash out, you just ask us to cash out and we give you the money out. So it's a, it's a little bit more like uh, just literally a kind of a, a, a credit in the system. Mm -hmm. the, the thing that's so compelling about having a system that lets you both do work for people and pay for work is that you can do some work, get paid for it, and then obviously either take the money out in your bank account if you want to, or uh, use it inside the system to buy other things. That That's one of the things that seems so compelling about it, like Second Life, where you can go in, earn some Linden dollars. In Second Life, the Linden dollars value is a little different because it floats against the dollar. Right. And the Linden dollar is not something that Linden will give you back money for, so it's kind of not guaranteed by the company. Right now, um, the, the coffee dollar does work that way, so it's more like literal uh, dollars in that sense. Yeah, that's kind of the thing I was thinking about, why not make it real dollars if it's a one-to-one -one conversion? Um, you know, it, it, it's something that we've thought about. Uh, having, it, having it feel like uh, 
you know, money within a system with a with a different name. I, that's one of the things that seems kind of fun about it right mm -hmm. now. But it's something that we'll think about and re-examine as we as we go forward. Mm -hmm. we, we kind of enjoy the coffee dollar idea. I, I think there's a general phenomena around creative new systems where people are. No matter, I guess, no matter how you brand it, people are kind of in that system. And so we kind of like the idea that the currency is sort of something that, I don't know, kind of has a life of its own inside mm -hmm. the system. And then you can cash out what happens with the, the tax issues and all of that. Well, what happens with the tax issues is when you cash out and when you earn money, we're going to do, and, and actually we have already had this experience with our Worklist system, which is similar to Coffee and Power, but it's called Worklist.net, which right. is designed just for software development. Um, the, the different forms that and the information we have to collect from you for tax purposes we do so if you <clears throat> are going to take money out of the system or are earning money in the system we're going to ask you for and collect tax information from you as necessary depending on whether you're a US citizen or not etc oh, okay taking this beyond the US it already is you're looking to pull back <laughs> you know much like Second Life there's so many virtual tasks as I pull back the camera here, you can see that uh, there's already lots of uh, things in Europe and outside the United States. So, I see one in the middle of the Atlantic. Well, let's see what I got. I want, <laughs> I want a coffee and power uh, coffee mug shipped to Denmark. Uh, what's this? I'll make you a YouTube introduction. I actually love this one. I think it's great. You know, here's somebody again. This you're not gonna find this in the yellow pages. This is somebody who makes a, a intro video. We need this. Maybe you need this. Oh, like a bumper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To go on your YouTube videos. Cool. Um, so that's uh, that, that's somebody who's that's somebody who's in Europe, which is where they put the job up. But you know, the reality is you don't really need to be anywhere for that one. The way we're doing Coffee and Power is we're making it so that if you want, you can put a job down on a particular point on the map mm -hmm. so that people near you can find you and find your jobs. On the other hand, if it's kind of just in the global village, if you will, you know, it doesn't really matter where you are, like Second Life, mm -hmm. then it just won't even show up on the map at all, but it will show up in the mission listings. You know, what kind of ratio are you seeing of uh, real world work question. versus virtual work? Uh, you know, it, we've probably had about, uh, I think to date there have been about 1,500 missions that have been put into the system, mm -hmm. uh, and many of them done. I think, if I had to guess right now, I would say the kind of stuff that can be done virtually to stuff that can be done locally, maybe like 50-50. We didn't really know. We were fascinated as to whether we originally thought that a lot of the utility around a service like this would be in just doing things right now locally for you. Right. You know, so San Francisco, New York, London. Uh, you know, the reality is we've seen a lot of work utility. There's a lot of work people can do for each other that it doesn't actually require co-location, but it, it, it does seem to be kind of meaningfully enabled by this kind of system. Like those trust features, you know? Right. If I can show you quickly, this guy has made thousand dollars making YouTube out rolls you know for you to staple onto your videos why not use them and, and yeah. what other system are you going to use to get that kind of rating on somebody fast for a small contract well I was thinking like there is Amazon's Mechanical Turk and some other ones I think yeah most of them are pegged only to virtual online work so this yeah. could be the first one that does both Mechanical Turk is a really interesting point because what's the average job size it's like a few dollars yeah the typical job size they're very small and a lot of those jobs are um, Highly, uh, they're very simple. They could be done by anyone. Right. So that's like mechanical term. And then on the other side, there's salaried employment, like, like you know, like like our experience at Linden Lab, uh, full on, you know, full time working working for somebody. But in between, there's a lot of interesting stuff, and that's kind of where we think we fall. Um, we think that coffee and power is the stuff that's, you know, maybe it's twenty dollars or fifty dollars or a hundred dollars. Maybe it, and and the other thing is we think it's the stuff where it really does matter who you're using. You're not going to pick somebody to do a new. Uh, graphic design or a logo for you, mm -hmm. um, or somebody to plan your menu and buy your groceries, which is one of the ones we're looking at here. You're not going to do that unless you understand something about the person you're about to hire. Mm -hmm. Mechanical Turk, really small stuff, You don't. Even, it doesn't matter. It's just anybody that can do it for you. Right. But here, in this middle, and, and then of course, obviously, salary employee, you're going to care about that too. But in this middle ground, 
that's that's where we think we're playing an interesting game. Like, how can we very quickly let, establish trust, show you who the person is, but let them do something for you that's fairly small compared to a normal salary job. Mm -hmm. The thing that uh, Ryan, uh, your co-founder, just pointed out to me, there's also a, a fo follow feature, sort of like Twitter. Totally. So I can take, in fact, I'll take this user here, I'm going to say her name, MC Gaga here, who's done some work for us. She's a, a meal planner. She's totally, she's totally great. And what I can do is I can, I can go to her uh, profile here and I can follow her. And what that means, yeah, is whenever she puts something on there that she's willing to do, I'll get uh, an email and or if I want an SMS. Actually, I can also do the same thing with categories. So like uh, if I go to my settings here, if I'm a service provider, I can go to notifications. Pretty cool. I can go in and I can basically say, um, if anybody wants something in, in errands and deliveries, I want to know about it. I want to get an SMS for that mission. So you see how that's high utility. Cool. So you put out a kind of general broadcast yeah. request. I could see you getting bought by Twitter. By Twitter? Yeah, because they're sort of looking for a space now, especially that uh, Facebook and Google Plus have sort of captured the web-based social media. And Twitter is mm -hmm. sort of floundering for a reason to be besides doing stuff on mobile, but if you have this kind of integrated to a mobile yeah. system, then you immediately have an instant reason to use Twitter all the time. Yeah, it's an interesting question. I mean, I think that Twitter uh, very intelligently, uh, ob obviously in retrospect, broke into this idea of lighter and lighter weight messaging. I mean, again, we think about a big thing here as being, if we take the transaction barrier down, three minutes where for something that's worth a hundred dollars of work I can decide to use you to do it in three minutes how much of a market does that open up right and then that was like what Twitter did right like Twitter's question was almost like if I go from blogging and I go down to a really really small piece of information how much more opportunity does that create and the answer was a lot more than people thought Right? I mean, when Twitter first came out, people would have looked at me like, that's, yeah, that's like blogging, but just a sentence. Right. But there was a qualitative difference, and that qualitative difference opened up a whole new category. We think exactly the same thing is true here. There's a qualitative difference in terms of the types of things people can and will do if you take that that size barrier of the transaction down. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, the, the, the missions that are already happening, the things I've already done with Coffee and Power, they're incredibly fascinating. Like, I wanted to learn. Uh, I, I, I meditate and I do some sort of counting when I meditate. I wanted to learn how to count in Chinese because I wanted it to be harder for me to count when I was meditating. Mm -hmm. I had two different people on Coffee and Power come here to the work club, which is our you know physical hub for people to meet and work together. Um, and, and teach me how to count in Chinese. It was totally a blast, you know, and I, and I paid, I, I think, 30 or $40 to do that. And how interesting, right? I wouldn't necessarily have just done it. I couldn't have done it with Mechanical Turk. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't hire somebody, obviously, to teach me languages all day long. But I was able to do it on here. And, and if it's a $30 item, if I can't, you know, I'm a busy person, if I can't decide to spend $30 in less than like three minutes, I'm not gonna do it at all, right? Because I'm, I've already wasted more than $30 of my time thinking about whether to spend $30. So I think that's one of the things. But again, just like with Second Life, we just think that when you do that, when you take that transaction barrier down to $20 instead of $2,000 or something, it opens up this whole world of things that people can do for each other, you know, that we just have never thought of before. Let me put a hypothetical to you. I could see this having a tipping point when you could, in practicality, have almost all of your life needs taken care of by the, the coffee and power system. So, yeah, yeah. breakfast, lunch, dinner, yeah. all my chores, uh, even some of my work, my income. Yep. Yeah, I imagine, imagine having a portion of your income and a very creative portion. I mean, a right. portion that you may feel better about than a traditional job, right? Being income that's coming in from, from coffee and power. And then, as you said, a, a little slice of the things you do in your life, you can pay for in right. Coffee and Power. And yeah, that's exactly the vision that we have. And, and, and that's what we're seeing. You know, we're, we're seeing people start to do things, make a little money, turn around and do something interesting with it. And both of those things may be, be things that you wouldn't have otherwise done. You know, right. they, they're not, we're not really seeking to compete with and replace 
your nine to five job, at least not yet. Right. What we're seeking to do is give you a source of income in a way where you're like, I can't believe I got paid for that. You know, that yeah. was so interesting. Looking at a point in the not too distant future where you could actually integrate most of your, your wants and needs into the system. And then also you're working on a personal basis, almost like a small village or something where you trade yeah. favors. Yeah, I think a small village is an electronic village of some kind is really fascinating. And it's funny because we were all talking about that in the 1990s, even even before virtual reality, you know, Second Life was broadly discussed. People were sort of saying, hey, what's the electronic version of a village? What's it going to look like? And I think that now now that we all have the internet on our phones and we all sort of expect to be able to be connected in real time to the internet, we really are sort of going to see the answer to that question. Like what does the, the electronic village look like that you right. become a member of? And I think that you know it's going to have a lot of trust and transparency. It's going to have all these uh, smaller transactions than what we've seen thus far, and it's going to have a lot of sharing. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to have a lot of sharing built into it, so that we're not uh, wasting resources. For example, you know, how many things could you just borrow from somebody else? How many used items could you borrow from somebody else rather than going to a store or, uh, and buying it? I could exactly. see this is a great way to connect the developed world in terms yeah. of missions to you know the world that really needs to sort of be integrated in terms of work and resources. Yeah, and, and you know what, as, as, as you know, like one of the things that I was so excited about with Second Life was the idea that you could take people in the developing world and put them into the virtual world and let them not just learn and get to know people from all around the world, which is great, which is what people are doing today with Second Life, but also like do work and make money, be able to bring that money back into their local economy for their life needs. I think that that is definitely going to happen with Second Life, and I think that it's going to, but it takes time because you have to have high bandwidth connections to good computers. Now, on the other hand, Coffee and Power doesn't require that at all. It can work over a mobile phone. It, you know, it can work with very, very small access to the network. So, is it possible that these types of job sharing systems will be able to reach the developing world and help people? I think so. You know, there's an overall economic theory, by the way, that says that new technology, uh, a great book about this called The Rational Optimist, that says that new technology is actually helping people in the developing world more than it's helping people in the developed world. That like the, the impact of the cell phone as a technology lever for good is higher in the developing world than it is in New York. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So yeah, it seems to be part of this broader vision that you've had since, at least in Second Life, just basically figure out a way to save the world or <laughs> make it a better place. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Second Life is definitely going to get there as it, as it expands and as it becomes easier, but uh, this is an opportunity to maybe even provide utility like that a little bit earlier in time than, than the full-blown immersive, you know, enter the matrix type situation of the virtual mm -hmm. world is. Um, and yeah, the Second Life experience of watching people, the people that have been able to get into Second Life and succeed there, watching them help each other, you know, it has made me just totally want to keep doing uh, projects like that. And I, and I know, uh, speaking for myself and for Ryan and for Fred, that's what we're excited about is this idea of the, 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 the incredible excitement and novelty of creating new ways for people to empower themselves and make money uh, rather than sort of using the technology to just make existing ways work better. Right. And talking about uh, Second Life kind of growing and connecting, uh, there's been a lot of discussion uh, with uh, people at Linden Lab that I've had and uh, other like game developers and so on on, on really how to, to see Second Life grow and one of the big ones that I definitely advocate, uh, I know Corey and Jericho has talked about too, is is having a, a some kind of gaming system within Second Life, so sort of a leveling system, sort of a, I like this kind of anonymously based um, uh, ratings, which mm -hmm. I blogged about because I, I thought like we did, uh, Linden Lab did do uh, you know rating systems in 2003, but they're just very easily gameable because it was a one to one, so and so rated you. But this one seems like it could work. So what's your state? Uh, what's your sense of this? Do you think something like this could work in Second Life, like implemented by the Lindens? I don't know, but I think it could. Um, I, I think that it's it's it's. You're right. It's an interesting question to ask. What combination of uh, transactions and performance and behavior you'd want to tie into like a leveling system. But you know, when we worked on the leveling system in Coffee and Power, which I was just showing you, um, it, was, it was pretty fun. I mean, once you look at, you know, how many people have said they trust you, how much money have you made, how many different types of jobs have you done, how many different people have you worked for, all of that 
can be pulled together into a single level in a pretty compelling way. And I, I, bet, I bet we could do the same thing inside Second Life um, uh, as a way of uh, as a way of providing, you know, both motivation and behavior, but also a simple way for people to get to know each other. I, I think, you know, from my learnings from, from this experience, which in many ways is kind of almost a almost a simplified version of Second Life, right? I mean, it's a it, 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 there's there's less going on naturally in a sort of a, a two dimensional, you know, job marketplace right. than there is in the full three D world of Second Life. So it's interesting, yeah, to look at that, and it, it does give me more confidence that something like that could work. So I, I, I yeah. think, you know, from my own perspective as as chairman. You know, that's the kind of thing that I'll definitely be chatting with folks at Second Life and saying, hey, this, this work, works pretty well. Although it's still early days for Coffee and Power, so we'll have to see good. how yeah. well it works for us. I mean, there's there's been, you know, a couple thousand people you know, so far that have, that have gotten in there. And a couple thousand things. uniques? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yep. Which is a good start for mostly based in San Francisco, I imagine. So. Well, you know, it's interesting. Uh, I don't know exactly what yeah. the split between San Francisco and the rest of the world is. I, I wish I knew off the top of my head for that, but of the... Uh, 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 of the, you know, le less than 2,000 people, I think we have about 1,600 people so far that have signed up. Um, I'm sure many of them are here, but as I said, it's really been interesting how it's been more of a global uh, initial usage pattern than, than, than what we expected. Cool. Well, what, what's a good way for people to get started with Coffee and Power? Uh, Coffeeandpower.com. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it's easy, obviously, to sign up. There's nothing to it yeah. um, other than just you you know, pick a, picking a name. Coffee dollars up front. You don't have to buy coffee dollars up front. What's so great is you can just put in a mission that says what you will do um, and earn a little money and then spend it. It's, it's easy to get in there and actually uh, get started right away. You can also go to public chat and just talk to people, ask questions, find out what's going on. But coffeeandpower.com is the place to go.